Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and with the release of iOS 26 to the public and iOS 26.1 to the public, there's hundreds and hundreds of new features. I thought we'd go over the very best features with some tips and tricks to go along with those. The first thing has to do with reminders. If you use the reminders app a lot, there's a quick way to access this now from multiple locations. One of them is the control center. So if you just press and hold on an empty spot here, go to add a control, we can then search for reminders and you'll see it here. We can add it to the control center and we can quickly access it either by tapping it or press and hold to view our different lists where you can add a reminder there. You also have the option to add the same thing to the lock screen now. So if we press and hold, then customize the lock screen here down in the bottom, if we get rid of maybe the camera or you could get rid of the flashlight, whichever one you don't use, press the plus button again, search for controls for reminders, and then add it directly to your lock screen. If you want to use it from there. There's also a third option you can do as well. So we now have the option to add it to the action button directly. So if you create a ton of reminders, this is a fast way to access it. Again, you'll do that by going into your settings, going down to action button, then swiping over until we get to controls. And again, you'll add the same exact thing. So choose a control search for reminders, or you could scroll down to it. And now it's set as a control. So if we swipe home, press and hold the action button, it then pops up on the screen and you can add a reminder. Also arriving with iOS 26.2 is an additional reminder feature where it can utilize your alarm clock. So if we create a reminder, maybe have it remind me, make a new YouTube video. And then if we scroll down, you'll see, of course, we have our date and time, but if we scroll down to time, we now have a new option for urgent. If we enable urgent, we can then have it alarm based on the time that we set. So maybe we'll set 5 PM and then it would alarm and let me know that we have our new reminder. So this is something that they've added with iOS 26.2 that's coming in the near future as well. Back to iOS 26 or 26.1. If we go into messages, there's an option you may not be aware of. Within messages, maybe you're just with one other person or a group of people, you now have the option for polls. So if you just tap that plus button here on the left, go to polls, you can maybe have a different choice of where to eat, maybe a place you want to vacation, something like that. So here's maybe we'll put in car names and just do that and tap send. Then whenever someone votes, you'll see it here and it will select it and let you know how many of those people voted. So that's a great option. If maybe you're trying to decide on a place to eat, place to go or something else. Also, if maybe you sent someone a message here like this one, we can press and hold and we can now select specific parts of the text. So before you had to select the entire thing. Now you can just refine it to whatever you'd like. So maybe you just want to pick this here, copy it, you can then select specific parts of text instead of just the entire thing. So if you haven't been using that, you want to quickly copy and paste, you can do that as well. Another tip is how I manage not just my iPhone, but also my Mac with today's sponsor, clean my Mac. I always start with smart care. If my Mac is feeling slow or sometimes when storage is filling up, it helps optimize the essentials with maintenance, cleanup, and any threats that could be present. For more in-depth cleanup, you can run cleanup in my clutter to find and remove system cache, development junk, duplicates, and unnecessary files taking up space. You can also use the assistant to help optimize battery drain and overheating issues with tips and quick fixes. And when it comes to malware, the Moonlock anti-malware engine helps you locate and remove any malware and viruses should you have any. There's also the new cloud cleanup that can connect to the accounts on iCloud, OneDrive, and Google Drive. It scans the cloud to find large space wasters, synced and unsynced files, both in cloud storage and on device. All scanning happens locally on your Mac, so your data stays safe. Get tidy today. Try seven days free and use my code Zolotech for 20% off with the link in the description below. Another thing you may not be aware of is on a phone call, if we go in and maybe we'll place a call to Apple, if we call Apple, I'll just turn it down here. If we call Apple, we'll just put it on mute. Maybe you're on that phone call and you want to use Siri, but you can't activate it anyway. Double tap the bottom here and you can now use type to Siri. So what is the weather? And it works just like you would expect. So you can send that and you'll get your result directly from Siri based on whatever you're asking. 
In addition to this, you may not already be aware of it, but you now have an option for more and then you can place the phone call on hold. So get notified to pick up when someone answers the phone. So now it's on hold and you'll be notified to pick up the call when someone answers. So that's a great feature that's available now with iOS 26 and 26.1. Also with hold assist, there's an option to have it just go on hold automatically when it senses you're on a call and knows you're waiting for someone to pick up. So you can go into your settings for your phone and I'll just use a shortcut I have here. I'll link in the description. You'll see that we have hold assist detection automatically detect when you are placed on hold. So you can step away. iPhone will then notify you when it's time to pick up so you can have it enable this automatically if you choose. Also, there's a new option in iOS 26.1 for haptics where it was before just sort of mandatory that it would play haptics when you pick up a phone call or hang up, you can now disable that. Now, if you're someone that uses the camera a lot and maybe you use a third party microphone or you just need a little bit more isolation from the overall environment than the microphone on the iPhone itself can provide, you can now use your AirPods as that microphone. If we go ahead and connect our AirPods, I'll show you how it works. So I'll put one in my ear. We'll go into the camera app. And with the camera app active, we go into the control center and then tap this little green icon here at the top. With this icon, we now have the options for AirPods Pro 3 for an audio input. Of course, you could switch back and forth between your iPhone microphone or same as system. And then we can switch between things such as automatic or voice isolation based on your environment. So if you want that additional voice isolation, it's active there. And then you can start recording and maybe people will have better audio because it's closer to your mouth when you're recording with the AirPods themselves. So this is a great option. If you haven't used it yet, I would definitely recommend trying that out. With the introduction of iOS 26, Apple introduced a new design theme called Liquid Glass. Some people love it, some people really dislike it, but now there's additional options since the introduction of iOS 26.1 and there's even more coming in the future. The first thing is if we go into settings in iOS 26.1, go down to display and brightness, we have liquid glass options. We can then change it from clear to tinted and with tinted, you'll see notifications are now tinted. If we go back to clear, notifications are clear. This carries across to things such as music as well. Down at the bottom, you'll see that it's when you scroll here is more of a glass look. And again, if I change it back to tinted, it will change back to sort of a matte look or sort of tinted look overall, sort of like you added tint to it on your car window. The other thing they're adding with iOS 26.2 is the same thing, but for the lock screen. For example, if we go onto this phone here and then we go into the lock screen, you'll see we'll get rid of this, press and hold. And if we go to customize, tap on the clock here. We now have a slider at the bottom to change the overall translucency of liquid glass. So we can have it completely frosted or completely clear. That looks more like transparent glass compared to the frosted glass. So you can now adjust it based on whatever you like. And this works across multiple clock designs as well. So whatever works for you, of course, you can customize this and make it larger or smaller. And hopefully they'll bring even more to this across the entire OS. Many people have been asking for a slider for the overall liquid glass theme across the entire OS. I would love to see this as many people like the very transparent look that was introduced with iOS 26 when it was first shown at WWDC. If we bring this back up to where I like it and we go back home, another thing people are asking me is when you go in to customize this, they can no longer customize their home screen. That's because Apple changed the way they've done this. So here you can customize the lock screen. If we swipe to go home, press and hold in an empty space, go to edit, then go to edit wallpaper. You can then customize it here. You can change the color, the gradient or whatever works for you. You can blur it or unblur it and then leave it like that. However, if you want to change the overall icons, many people ask me how I have this layout. You just simply drag them to where you want. So if I want it over here, I can leave it there. If I want it here, leave it there. And the same thing is true with the dark icons. Since I get so many questions about it again, press and hold on anywhere in the screen and then go to edit, then go to customize. And now you can change it from clear to dark default, or even tinted based on what you prefer. So we'll go back to the dark theme and then this little icon here brightens the background and that's what you'll have there. You can make larger or smaller icons here as well. The larger ones don't have the titles underneath them. 
With Liquid Glass, there's additional options for accessibility if maybe you're having issues seeing different parts of the OS or you just want a different look. You can change this by going into your settings, accessibility, display and text size, and we now have the option to increase contrast, which was updated recently, and then you can differentiate with color and even reduce transparency, which sort of gets rid of Liquid Glass altogether. So if we go into the control center, you'll see it's pretty much gone for the most part. You'll still have some highlights around some of the icons, but for the most part, it turns off liquid glass and it just changes the look back to sort of what we had with iOS 18. We also have even more contrast options here for show borders. So turn that on and now it sort of circles everything. That used to be included with increased contrast, but now it's included as a separate option. So you could have either or, and then you can see much more clarity here with additional contrast. So if that's what you prefer, of course, turn it on. If not, turn it off and it will go back to normal, but you could keep the borders there or customize it however you'd like with bold text and more. With the introduction of Apple Intelligence, Apple added visual intelligence that utilizes your camera to tell you what's maybe in the background or what you're looking at. It can be everything from a restaurant and more, but there's a new option for screenshots with this. For example, if we go to Apple's website, take a screenshot, and if we go into the screenshot, you'll see we have some Apple Intelligence features at the bottom as long as you have the option. So for example, we can search, it will search whatever's on the screenshot itself and show you different things that are relevant. From the iPhone 17 Pro Max that it notices right away, we even have an eBay option here, or we can ask questions here with ChatGPT, or maybe we want to highlight that and take a look at it and search results. So we'll give it a second, and now it recognizes that it's an iPhone Air. This works on any screenshot throughout, so maybe I don't want that, but I want this one this time. It switches over, and we can see more results with that. So again, circle, then go to search, and then it will find it. So it works on any screenshot throughout. With the introduction of iOS 26, we gained some new ringtones. You can of course go in there and see them under sound and haptics and then ringtone. And you can see the one that I use called Dreamer, but you of course can customize it however you'd like. However, now it's easier than ever to add your own custom ringtone. You can do this by going into your files app. So within files, you'll see I've actually searched for new ringtone and we can listen to it by tapping on it. We'll just press play. You can hear it there. And if I want to set this as a ringtone, I can share it. And then I can go here, go to more, and then use as ringtone. It then automatically adds it as a new ringtone within your ringtone settings. So now if I tap on it, it's my ringtone that I'm currently using. It needs to be about 30 seconds long, so you may need to edit that with an application, but typically if you have a 30 second long clip or MP3, you can just simply add it as a ringtone now. Also, if you want to remove the ringtone, just simply swipe to the left, tap delete, and it goes away. If we go to the lock screen on iOS 26.1, for a long time, you've been able to open your camera just by swiping. So we can swipe to open camera, but a lot of people don't like this as they mistakenly open their camera or just don't want this to be an option. You can now turn this off. Go into settings, go down to camera, scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see an option for lock screen swipe to open camera. If we disable this, it then turns that option off. So if we go back to our lock screen, you can no longer swipe to open the camera. So this is a great option. I turned it off. And now if I wanna get into my camera, I just press camera control instead of the actual swipe action. And I no longer have those mistakes. If we go into the clock, there's a new option you may not be aware of. If we go under our alarms here, we'll go to the alarm for 8 a.m., you'll see that we have the option for snooze. However, we now have an option for snooze duration. Typically, Apple has it go off every nine minutes, but now it's customizable from one minute all the way to 15 minutes, so you can set it however it works best for you. Also with the alarm this time around with iOS 26.1, Apple made it slide to cancel the alarm. Some people don't like this option. So what I mean is we'll have the alarm go off here in just a second. With the alarm going off, we have to slide to stop now. We can now disable this if we don't prefer it. In order to do that, we can go into settings, go down to accessibility, then scroll down to where it says touch scroll to the very bottom and there's a new option for prefer single touch actions. It says prefers that user interface items require a single touch instead of a sliding action. With this enabled, it goes back to just press to stop the alarm. So I can show you that as well. We'll set it for one minute ahead here and take a look. So now you'll see with the alarm sounding, we can just tap to stop.
Now, finally, there's an option I wanted to tell you about that maybe if your phone is feeling more sluggish or slow and you have more than enough battery throughout the day, I've found that on the newer phones with the new adaptive power mode, turning that off can actually increase the overall performance as far as it ramping up that performance. I believe this is due to the overall CPU ramping up and down based on adaptive power needs. So trying to conserve some power, you'll see if I scroll here, it's nice and smooth. But sometimes when I first scroll, whether that's in the control center or in Anywhere else, you'll see it was a little bit choppy there as I scrolled down. Typically turning off adaptive power seems to help that, but of course that will hinder the overall battery life you're getting. If we go into our settings, go to battery, wait for it to load, scroll down, we'll go to power mode and turn off adaptive power. I find that this typically helps with things such as scrolling. If we go back and forth, it's much smoother. It's not perfect, but it does seem to bring out some of those jitters or get rid of some of those jitters and stutters throughout. So let me know if you've tried that and see if it works for you. So those are some of the latest features with some tips and tricks for iPhone on iOS 26 and iOS 26.1, as well as a couple features coming soon in iOS 26.2. Let me know how they're working for you, if you've used any of them, if any of them were new to you, or if your phone performance is improved with that tip at the end. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.